You guys, summer break is killing me. I'm so tired. This is literally my survival juice at this point. <laughs> That's not what this video is about, so what's up you guys? Welcome back. If you are new, my name is Jess. Today's story is a very long-awaited magazines part two. I made <laughs> I made a story time months ago about magazine crew, and I will leave it on the card up here if I can find it. I mean, it, it's old. But I was on a magazine crew on and off for several years. I actually did really, really well in the magazine crew and was promoted a few times. However, at this point in my life, I was in full-blown active addiction, so because of that, it really deterred me from being, being consistent, being successful, or, you know, as you can imagine, there were a lot of issues and setbacks. Me and my friend, Doug, who is no longer with us, he ha did pass away from an overdose. I will put our picture up here if I can find it. I didn't want to pose a lot for pictures back then, which kills me, you guys. It kills me that I only have one picture of me and my friend that is no longer with us. So it is so important to take pictures. When you go out with your friends, don't take pictures of your food. Take pictures of the moments that you share together because you never know when it's going to be the last time that you see that person. And I wish that I, I took pictures of everyone. I've lost so many people in the years or throughout the years. Anyway, so I was kind of like family with Doug. When he got hired, um, he was panhandling, but there was just something about him that was like, he just had this like it factor and it's really hard to explain. I wasn't there when he got hired, but I have heard several stories from other managers, um, one manager in particular that did hire Doug. And you know the song, Teach Me How to Dougie? Well, that like came out when I met Doug and we would just, we would tear it up. We would laugh, we would joke around and it was just, some of my best memories were spent on the magazine crew, like Teach Me How to Dougie. And it was just, we just had a really good time. Well, um, unbeknownst to me at the time, when I first met him, he was an addict, I was an addict, but because the magazine crew had really strict rules about using hard drugs, it was very difficult to know that um, at first. So Doug and I were really, really good, and he, um, he was the best salesperson I'd ever met in my life. He could sell me my own car, like <laughs> he was so good, and I never met anyone as talented as he was when it came to sales and every other manager or agent that worked with us would confirm that too he was so good we were both in addiction and at this point i think we were on the east coast i was getting h in capsule form i'd get a bag of tons of capsules with h in it which is how they packaged it in virginia where we were at i believe and i had gotten my job back actually because my boss helped me detox helped me get off of it and the stipulation was that I could work there as long as I was sober. And I was like, oh, I got it. No, I, I didn't. But I hid my addiction from everyone, or I thought I was hiding my addiction at the time, right? People are always like, girl, I knew the whole time. But to me, I'm like, I'm doing a really good job. I'm hiding, I'm hiding my addiction. <sighs> I was a mess. But we were on the East Coast, and my boss came to us one night and said, hey, we're going to jump to Kansas. And I'm like, it's the worst place to go if you're an H addict t a decade ago because Kansas wasn't really known for H and we knew that Kansas had go fast, but it didn't have H and we knew that. So it was really the only time that Doug and I like looked at each other and we're like, mm, like we're, we're addicts and we, we don't want to go for that same specific reason. So, um, so we were both like not, we were not feeling this jump to Kansas. So, but we went anyway, and we get there, and I just remember on the way there, I had these sunglasses on, and it's like noon, and we're out, we're out selling magazines, and one of the managers put his hand like this over my face, and I had sunglasses on. He just wanted to see if I was awake, and of course I wasn't. I was nodding out, and he's like, oh, pathetic, pathetic. He's talking crap to me because I was using, and he knew it. I'm like, what? what what's your problem and he's like are you serious get your shit together and i was just like whatever like everyone knows girl you're not you're not hiding it very well i'm like whatever they call the very back of the van whale shit that's the terminology on mag crew and doug was in whale shit nodding out too and the manager that was driving the van was really annoyed that we were both using so we get to kansas and doug and i went out to sell magazines together and we're, we're just killing it. We brought in a few thousand dollars in cash just from a few hours at the mall. We were killing it, you guys. I mean, we were just so on point. 
and Doug had the idea to steal the U-Haul that we had taken for from um, Virginia to Kansas. So we needed a U-Haul because a lot of the managers have Xboxes, big screen TVs, we, we have all kinds of things. I mean, we live at a hotel, so you can imagine all the stuff that we have and we towed around with us. Big old bins, shoes, I mean, we just, we spent our money on bullshit, basically. <laughs> so, um, and that was very, very apparent. So anyway, um, he's like, let's just take the U-Haul. Now, it was in Doug's name, but it was for the crew, right? So he's like, let's take the U-Haul and just bounce. Doug was also dating a really close friend of mine that was also from Sydney, New York, and um, we were kind of we're kind of like family in this moment. And there were moments where it just wasn't good. I had taken Doug and my friend back to my hometown. I mean, she was from my hometown too, but you know, we we had a lot of we had a lot of time together. We spent a lot of time together, and uh, unfortunately, me and that girl are no longer friends anymore because of a different situation that happened years later. But he's like, let's take the U-Haul. Now we're in Kansas. I'm sorry if this is all over the place. We're in Kansas and he's like, let's take the U-Haul and go to Kentucky and see my family. I know in Kentucky I can get us pills and I can get us what we need. And we had tons of money from that day. So it was me, Doug, and his girlfriend who at that time was a really good friend of mine. And I'm like, let's go. Like, okay, let's go. So the plan was to leave at like 2 a.m. Which is kind of how you have to quit Mad Crew because no one wants you to leave. And that's like a whole story for another time. But you can leave. But they just, they'll try to sales talk you into staying and it's just, no, we don't have time for that. So, um, it was probably 10 o'clock at night and the owner, my boss, came into my room and he was, he was so proud of me for doing so well. And he said, I've never seen you look so good. I've never seen you get sales so good. You're doing so good. You look healthy. You look healthy and you're just really inspiring all the girls here. You're just, you're doing so good. I'm so proud of you. I've never seen you be on top of your game like this before, keep it up, and he leaves. And I'm just like, yep, I'm a piece of garbage. Like, I felt so bad. And while he was giving me that little speech, you guys, I wanted so bad to be like, I need help, I'm not okay. But I couldn't even bring myself to say that because I got his approval and there was just something in me. Like, I looked up to him and I just, I couldn't tell him that. Like, I really respected my boss, you guys. He helped me in so many ways and he helped me out of a lot of bad situations from my hometown. I went on the run several times and you know that maybe he shouldn't have helped me like that, but to me, in that moment, I respected him a lot for helping me when no one else would. Moving on, 2 a.m. rolls around and we're like creeping out, like creeping out with our little bags and I'm like, girl, you ready? And she's like, yes. I'm like, okay, let's go. So we went to the, the guy's room, which is where Doug was, and I'm like, come on, like, you're gonna wake someone up. So we're like taking our, I mean, it was really like an escape. It was like a prison escape and I'm just like, come on, let's go. So we get in the U-Haul and I, <laughs> I remember I'm like, don't close the doors all the way until we get out. Cause we just did not want anyone to hear like us leaving, right? So we take this U-Haul, we stole this U-Haul, even though it was under his name. And we drove the U-Haul from Kansas to Kentucky and it was the longest drive ever. It killed my back. You know how like U-Hauls are not comfortable. Like you have to sit straight up. Oh, I hated it. And I was in the middle seat. I let her, I let Doug's girlfriend sit in the real seat. And I was like on the middle seat because she's, she was tall. She's like six foot tall. So I'm like, girl, I'm little, like I'm five, four. So I'm like, girl, you sit in that seat. And I was just like crunched up and I was so uncomfortable. So we get there and it's really just kind of a mess. We showed up at his cousin's house and his cousin would smoke hard. And he like got this really fancy hotel room for some reason. So me and Doug and Doug's girlfriend and Doug's cousin got this really, really fancy hotel room and it had a jacuzzi in it. And it was like really, really nice. Well, we went out to score pills, right? Instead of leaving my suitcase there, I took my suitcase with me. And here's why. I was so tired of losing my stuff or people stealing my stuff. Like, I don't know this person. So I'm just gonna take my suitcase with me. And it was heavy. I would tote my suitcase around everywhere I went because I had makeup and clothes and things that were just really personal to me and iPod touch. Like it was my, this was my stuff and I didn't wanna lose my stuff anymore. You can imagine when you're in that world, like, whatever. I digress. Okay. So I take my suitcase with me and we run into these people at this gas station and it is a mother and a daughter and they drive a red truck and they said, yeah, we can get you. We can get that for you. So we're like, great. Um, I'm not going to give you money until like, what's up? <laughs> so we're going to go with you. Well, they drove us from the gas station to their house 
And for some reason, you guys, I took my suitcase out and I walked my suitcase in the house with them. But I think I just got so tired of like toting it around. They're like, oh, we just have to go here real quick. And I'm like, okay, great. We're going to go with you. I'm not going to let you just take my money. I don't know you. So she's like, you can just leave your suitcase here. And I'm like, I really want to. So I'm like, okay, I'll just leave my suitcase here. And I got back in the truck and we got to this other part of town and she got us what we asked for. We paid her and for some reason we just went back to the hotel. And now I left my stuff at this lady's house. So I'm calling her and I'm calling her. And then finally I just took a cab back to this person's house and it was really hard for me to remember where she lived. I actually got dropped off a few blocks over and I had to walk around. I'm like, dang, what is this house? Like, what does it look like? And I'm trying to remember and I found it. I go up on the door and I knock on the door. I'm like, hey, I left my stuff here. This woman's daughter is like yelling at me and she's like, you didn't leave your stuff here. Get out, like get out of here. And I'm just like, okay, like I'm about to fight this chick. Like what the heck? So I'm like, are you kidding me? She's like, I don't even know who you are. Get off my property, get off my property. And she's screaming at me. And I'm just like, wow, it's like summer. <laughs> it's like summer in Kentucky and people are taking notice. Like her, their neighbors are out and I'm not, I'm in like a really sketched out part of town. I'm not even exactly sure what city it was. But she's like screaming at me and I'm just like, I'm about to fight this chick on her front yard. Like, this is crazy. So someone else is like, I'm going to call the cops. So I'm like, shit, I'm on the run. I can't, can't duke this out right now. So I leave, but I do not let it go. I'm calling and I'm calling and I'm calling and I'm threatening them and I'm, I'm acting crazy. Well, finally the woman, the girl's mother was like, okay, I'll bring you your stuff. What hotel are you staying at? And I'm like, bet. We at the Holiday Inn, I don't know what hotel it was, but I'm like, bet, we're at the Holiday Inn or whatever. And she's like, okay, so she rolled up and Doug said, you are not walking outside. You're just gonna fight her. Like he knew me, he knew me. I did not wanna talk to this girl. As soon as she got out of the truck, I planned on punching her in the face because that's just how I solve my problems. Now I'm not flexing, I'm not bragging, I'm not saying I am tough. I'm saying I made really poor decisions and my addiction kind of controlled my life. I was a very angry person and before anyone could like yell in my face, I would usually punch them. Now, the only reason I didn't do that at her house is because there's all these people looking around, like staring at me, right? So now I'm like, this is a dark parking lot. It's like midnight, no one's around. She's gonna get hers. And that was my mindset. And Doug, having known me for a few years and seen me in several brawls, he was like, I am not letting you out of this hotel room. Let me go downstairs and get it. And I'm just like, all right, all right, fine. So he goes downstairs gets it, comes back up, and I'm, I'm in the hallway. I'm not even waiting in the hotel room. I'm in the hallway. So he hands me the suitcase. You guys, it is so light. Like, I know how much the suitcase weighs. I'm lugging around this freaking suitcase forever, right? I know how heavy that suitcase is. I don't even take it into the room. I unzip it right there in the hallway, and I'm looking through it, and I'm like, mother, oh, like, she stole all my stuff. She stole all my stuff, my perfume, my makeup. She stole everything from me, jewelry, everything. My queen bitch ring that I got, which um, queen bitch means I, I was a very good salesperson. I had been promoted three times and that ring just meant everything to me. So she stole my queen bitch ring and I was so, so, so upset about it. So I run downstairs trying to catch this red truck, but they had already sped off. And I was so mad. I'm like, why would you let me, like, why would you not let me go down there? This bitch stole all my stuff, da, da, da. And now I'm blaming everyone. I'm blaming him. I'm blaming this chick. I'm throwing a fit. Like, I didn't have the hindsight to see. It's my fault. This is my own fault because I'm putting myself in negative situations. I'm the one that left my suitcase there. I'm the one that was trying to buy, buy pills from these strangers at a gas station. I mean, what did I expect, right? Now I can see it and I can see the poor decision making. I can see how addiction destroyed my life. But in that moment, I was so mad. So, so Doug locks me out of this hotel room and he's not letting me in. My friend's not answering the phone. They've just, they're done with me. They're done with me. They're done with me. They're done. And I, now I get it because I was acting irate. And I'm like, open the door. Like, this is bullshit. <laughs> open the fucking door. And they didn't. So... I took a little bit of the money that I had left and I got a cab and I took a cab to a Greyhound bus station, which was closed. It was locked. I had to sit outside the Greyhound bus station for hours waiting for it to open. And then I called my boss in the morning and I'm like, hey, can I come back to work now? Now, I just stole a U-Haul and the best agent on the crew and his girlfriend and I have left 
and in the middle of the night after I got like praised for doing such a good job and I'm like I'm sorry I'm so sorry and um he's like yeah I'll get you a bus ticket I mean he was so irritated with me but he hired me again he let me come back again and I put them through so much crap I know I'm smiling but I was just so ridiculous I don't know why everyone put up with my crap I mean I do know why I was really good at my job when I was on if I had H in my system I was so good I was on point if I didn't there were no sales to be had so I was really up and down and unfortunately Doug isn't here to share some really good stories. I would give anything to have one more conversation with him. Just one more conversation about laughing about stealing a U-Haul and I'm never going to be able to talk to him again. He's gone and that hurts so bad. I mean, he left behind two beautiful babies and a beautiful wife and that's what addiction could cost you. It's not a death sentence. It doesn't have to end that way. You can get help. So I really do hope you guys enjoyed this story time. I don't want to end it on a negative note. I, I do miss my friend and I have several friends that have passed away and I would do anything to have one more conversation with them. So take pictures with your friends, you guys. You never know when you're going to see them last. You just never know. Life is so precious and it is so beautiful. Addiction is not a death sentence. It is curable. So I hope you guys enjoyed the story time. Stay safe, stay sober, and if you need help, please reach out. I love you guys. Bye.